channel. Today we're going to be working on the door skin. So I'll get to it and I'll show you what we're going to be doing. Okay, so you might remember this one from a few weeks ago. This is the one that we unpicked together. Um, what we aren't going to do first is work on the outside of the skin. On the start, whoa. Whoa. we are going to strip off some of this because if we're going to be doing any metal work and metal finishing, we can't have that in, in the inside of the skin. Um, and yeah, we'll, uh, we'll start cleaning up some of this stuff and then we'll flip over on the other side and clean that up as well. I can't think. So now that we've sort of got most of it off, um, what I have here is because it's in the middle of the door, it's more accessible, so it's obviously going to be a little bit thicker. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sort of soften it up with a little bit of old thinners. This is another reason why I keep this sort of stuff. And what all that'll do, that'll bite in and it'll just make it a little bit more easy to scrape. And what I'll also use this for is to get rid of any of the old paint that's on the inside. Um, so yeah, as you can see, it's already sort of coming up through here. You can see that it's sort of eating away at it. Stop there for a little bit. The old man decided he'd uh, bring in this little fella. Hey, look at him. Isn't he beautiful? Little bearded dragon. Oh, not sure if you can quite see him. All right. Now that we've got all the, the sound down there off, we're going to go ahead and get rid of some of this old paint. So basically, pretty simple. Just going to use my old thinners. Sort of get some of that on there. Don't need to get so crazy because we'll work this around. Just like that. Alrighty, so that one's pretty well got all the um, all the sound deadener off. Now the next step will be getting the rest of all the red oxide off, or at least as much as possible at this stage. And what I'm going to be using for that is these fellas here. So just a die grinder with a cleaning strip wheel on it, and the little roll lock with a, I think this is a 40 grit disc on it. Now. I'm not going to be using this for grinding. This is only just for getting some of the thicker material off, just getting the bulk of it off, knocking off some of the, the, the scale off. That is not for removing material, all right? Can't stress that enough. I can't think. Alrighty, so again, going over with the clean strip wheel to get sort of some of the, the bulk of it all off again. Um, still a little bit of paint left, so what I'm going to do now is, is I'm just going to go once over again with just a little bit of thinners and some scotch bright. That'll sort of lift the rest of it up, and um, for the time being, after that, this is pretty well. Um, it can stay like that until I finish all the metal work. So yeah, there's a few sort of dents to iron out, and obviously I'll have to replace the lower skin. So that one's cleaned up enough for now. 
that we can uh, start making some more progress on it. As you can see, still needs a little bit more work, but just while we're doing the metal work on this one, that'll be fine. Um, anyway, there was a little bit of a reason why I did the inside first, and that is because a lot of people neglect the back side of the panel, which is where all the rust starts to come from. So that was a reason why I did this first. But anyway, now that that's out of the way, we can uh, flip him over and focus some attention on the easier side. So as you can see, we've got a little bit of bog here with some, uh, with some primer on it and a lot of surface rust. But I'm going to show you how to get rid of all that. So what we're going to be cleaning that off with is this. Nothing too fancy, it's just a cheap uh, polisher. Um, it's got a clean strip wheel on it. That is a very old one, so that's why it's a bit worn on the edges. It's got the backing pad on it. Really, that's all you need. Um, just to sort of get yourself started, just to get off some of the uh, off the bulk of the surface rust and then I'll, uh, I'll show you guys how to get rid of the remaining rust that's sort of left uh, with the deoxidine. As you can see, still a fair bit of surface rust on it. Um, I actually didn't realise how much red oxide paint was on this one, but um, yeah, it does seem like there is still a bit left on it uh, that someone's put on it at some stage. It's definitely not um, original red oxide, but that's all right. Um, probably gonna go over this with just another application of thinners on the, uh, the Scotch-Brite. Yeah, you might look at this and go, oh, geez, that's real nice and bright metal. But look, okay, there is still rust on that. But all that black staining, that is rust. What you could see on the top of the orange, of so this sort of stuff, that is just what's sitting on the surface. All these little black spots, if you paint over that, that will come back, all right? But as you can see, I've sort of... I've, I've cleaned the panel down with the thinners again, and I've run back over it again with the cleaning strip wheel just to sort of get any sort of last little bit off. And that's what I'm left with, all right? Now this is ready for the deoxidine stage where I can then go through it with the Scotch-Brite and the deoxidine, and I'll scrub out all of those little pits. And even if I don't get them on the first run, I'll then go over again with the cleaning strip wheel to sort of dig them out. Because what happens with, when you use the deoxidine, sometimes it will sit just in the little pits and you might think that you've got it all or it's turned black, so it's, you know, nothing to worry about, but it, it's still there. Like, that needs to be shiny clean steel. Like, like that, you know? So I'm going to show you guys something, all right? This does not remove rust. This does not remove rust. This does not remove rust. And this sure as shit does not remove rust. This will destroy your panels, all right? That is for grinding only. That is the Protec Metal Conditioner. Take good note of this. Wear protective gloves. That is the most important one. There is a reason why they put that at the start. So there it is, it's in the cup, got the scotch bright, it's all ready to go. I have one dry rag for drying after it has been neutralized with water. If you do not neutralize it with water, you'll end up with a crystallization like this. And that's just gonna cause you a whole lot of problems because that is not neutralized. So that acid is still gonna keep, you know, it's gonna keep going. It's dried, but it's still gonna keep going. You need to get rid of that and you need to neutralize it.
So I've gone over this with the Scotch Bright and the Dioxidane. I'm not quite sure how you guys can see it, but there's still a few little black spots through here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna neutralize it and then I'm gonna go over it with the dry rag. This is my wet one, it's dried out a little bit, so I'm gonna wet it up again. You don't need it soaking wet, you just need it wet enough, you know, like just something to sort of to be able to wipe it away. And you gotta be quick because you don't want this stuff to dry and you can't wave it. So I'm gonna start at the bottom, work my way up. Make sure I get rid of it all. Go with my dry rag and I'm going to try and dry this as fast as possible. Some people like to hose their panels down and then blow them off with the air gun. That's alright, it doesn't look like it works. Don't get me wrong, I just find this to be a little bit more effective. Probably hasn't helped that it's so humid today either. Find a dry spot on your rag, go over again. Something straight away. So I'm going to talk to you about that, alright? And get these off because they're bloody disgusting. Uh, alright, hang on, let me turn you around. See the finish on the panel, see how it's sort of uh, washed around and it's very white. Again, that is the crystallization. I did not use enough water to neutralize this. So what I'm going to have to do again, I'm going to have to go over this again, but before I do that, these little black spots, I'm going to go over with the clean and strip disc, and I might even try and get them out just a little bit more of the wire wheel. Because um, yeah, like I said before, there's there will be a little bit of dioxidine sort of just stuck in them. And what happens is, is I'm not sure if you could see it in the time lapse, but when I started going over the panel with the dioxidine, you could really see the rust turn black. Um, what that is, like I said, that's sort of just the, it's the brown rust turning black because it's wet. Um, it sort of gives that sort of little bit of an effect. Um, sort of like if you have like a, a brown sheet like that, and if you wet that down, it would turn black. Um, that's one way to sort of explain it a little bit easier, but, um, yeah, I really, I need to sort of get that out. Now, if I went over that again with dioxidine, what would happen is I'd probably end up just sort of, sort of just skimming over the top again with it and it really wouldn't get in there, you know? Like, you can see through here, like that's, there's absolutely no black left in those pits at all. But these ones down here, they're a little bit thicker, a little bit deeper, I mean. Um, so yeah, they need a little bit more work. Same with the ones across here. If you get it in the right light, you can just see a little bit. I'm just gonna have to go back over these areas again. That's all right. And at least then I'll be able to neutralize it properly. A little bit more water to really wash that acid off. See, I've gone over those black spots with the, uh, with the clean strip wheel. You can't see them now, but you get your dioxidane again with the scotch bright sometimes yeah see you can see there's really easy now see how there's still there's still black in them what was happening before is when they were going over with the clean and strip disc basically what was happening is is you're just polishing those uh those pits sort of giving you effect that you have clean steel again Sometimes changing to a newer um, 
bit of scotch bright sort of helps scrub into those pits just a little bit better might make it a little bit easier for you i'm trying to do this as a little bit more of a how-to sort of video so i'm trying to get it pretty good um normally for something like this because i am going to have to be doing a lot of work on it um you know welding and panel beating and you know trying to just get this sort of as best as possible in the metal finish um i wouldn't necessarily go over all of those little spots again because it will be sitting around in bare metal for quite some time but i've found if you keep this clean um sort of out of moisture no dirt sort of settling on it nothing to hold moisture to the panel you'll get six months out of this pretty well you know and there, there won't be much rust on it at all you would have to go over it again if you're getting it ready to paint but um you know if, if you just want to have the car sit around in bare metal while you're working on it i find that a lot easier um these days i think when, when you start you know getting your epoxy primer on the car and then you're grinding it back off and then you're putting more back on it and then you're grinding it back off again it um it gets very tiresome um so yeah this is just sort of how i like to keep my panels uh, i'll let that sit for a little bit the one i have under here this car has been in bare metal for probably over 18 months and um yeah like that's still pretty clean almost as the day i did it you know like like i said i've sort of i've tried to keep that one as clean as possible so i kept the dust off of it it's obviously been in a shed but anyway i'm going to keep cleaning this up and uh i'll get it neutralized and i'll show you guys what it looks like afterwards all righty here we go look at that nice and clean well, mostly ready for some metal finishing uh obviously i brought it into this shed just because it's a little bit brighter in here That's sort of the finish I, I look for when I um, when I sort of finish neutralising. Some metal conditioners leave a little bit more of a, a bluish, and some again leave a little bit more of an orange sort of tinge to the panel. Um, this one sort of it leans more towards the blue sort of side. I know it's, it's very hard to see. Um, just yeah, it looks very grey at the moment, but um, yeah, sort of like a, a greyish, sort of bluish is sort of what I aim for. Which I mean, this one's pretty close. Um, yeah, like I said, the um, the humidity definitely definitely plays a big um, a big factor in it. So um, yeah, anyway, I think that's probably enough for this one at the moment. Um, still too hot to really work on that one at the moment, so. Probably pack it in and call it a day. But uh, yeah, as you can see, this one sort of, it's come a long way from what it was. Um, yep, got bare hands, I'm gonna touch it. Whoa. As you can see, the inside still needs a little bit more work. But I'm probably gonna blast the majority of that with garnet. Not really too worried about this because I mean that metal is pretty stuffed in there. So, as you can see, there's a few holes coming through the skin now that I've done that. But yeah, I'll uh, I'll hang this one upside down and I'll blast all under there. See if I can find any holes in that top edge. But um, yeah, no, it's uh, it's looking alright, I reckon. It's looking all right. Another thing I didn't show in the video, and I didn't show on this one either, was I did I straightened up some of these edges here. So you might notice they're a little bit nicer looking now. But anyway, that's probably enough for this one. Um, all right. 
that's not going to fall off i don't think anyway stay tuned for the next video guys um for that one we're going to be getting rid of some of these dents or all of the dents i should say that one's a pretty oh it's yeah, it's got a bit going on there so that'll be a bit of fun for us another one there another one back here somewhere and we're also going to be tackling replacing this lower skin so we'll probably go up to about here and uh that one's going to be mig welded so for you mig welders the guys who are like me who are uh, either too scared or too poor to buy a tig welder um stick around and i'll uh i'll show you how i stick a lower skin on so yeah that'll uh that'll be interesting for you guys anyway signing out thank you very much guys cheers